Hi everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel and it's video two of stripping down this 848 to find out what the problem is inside the engine. So, uh, I did ask you a question in the last video as to would you like to see me take the heads out in the engine or drop the engine and do it on the bench as I normally would and the majority vote was just drop the engine, so on a two to one basis, so that's what we're going to be doing. So I have done a little bit of work in between the videos, just um, some gentle stuff while I was bored in the evening, so I haven't had a ma massive chance to do loads of work. So what I'll do is I'll just quickly show you what I've done and then we'll get on with the next step, which is to drain the oil and remove the oil cooler. Okay, let me show you what I've done. Okay, so first off, round this side, I've just removed the rear brake master cylinder um, and its mount so that, that that was out of the way and I've just sort of hung it out of the way on the right hand side rear set so that's one bit I've done oh I have been uh, soaking where the bolts go through for the engine just to be on the safe side and also the swing arm with a bit of WD-40 because we know this has been sat for a little while you'll also notice I've got it up on a front paddock stand since last time that's because I'm going to take the front wheel probably out when I start dropping the engine just to give me a bit of access. Then on this side I've removed the gear linkage which you can just see is just hanging down and the side stand that was on there. I've still got to take the chain off so I will be doing that in a second. Um, and I've also removed the clutch slave cylinder which is up there. Again it's just supported around on its hose. Um, and just plugged the intake opening so no dirt gets in in there so what we've got left to do to drop the engine is got to disconnect the chain we've obviously drained the water out but I need to drain the oil out and then remove the oil cooler as well then just double checking around here you can see everything is disconnected that gets in my way we've just got the swing arm pivot to take out and then the two main supporting bolts and then the engine should drop away and just coming round on here we're obviously going to have some fun in a second when we see what comes out of here because it looks to be water but we'll see um, and we've got obviously take the oil cooler off which is just two pipes there and there's nothing else as you can see left on this side to take off okay let me get an oil pan and let's see what comes out of this engine okay same as when we've done the 1098 service in the past to get the oil out I just need to take this sump plug out of here which looks a bit crusty so I'm gonna to have to be a little bit careful on there so let me just set up the camera and um, we'll crack that open and see what we get okay let's see where we get to hmm that feels very tight and is already starting to feel like it will round in the hole a bit a bit loose I'm gonna see if I've got a tighter bit that will fit in there Right, I've got another bit that was a fair bit tighter to get in there, so hopefully it won't feel as dodgy. No, that's very tight. I'm just going to apply a bit of heat and see if we can't um, loosen that off a touch with a bit of heat. Right, so it has it has loosened, um, thank God. Um, I just had to be a bit brave and give it a good. So I heated it, tapped it with a hammer, um, and then it has come loose. So let me just get the drip tray under there now. Try and give you a view of what's coming out. 
and let's just see what we get. Okay. Mm hmm. It's very. Oh, it stinks. It's very chocolatey. There's a little bit of emulsification of the oil, so there's a little bit of water built up. Actually, the um, it looks to have been a good quality oil that's just been sat in there too long, rather than a lack of oil changes. It's just cloudy, not dirty. And it's full actually, so okay, positive sign. Right, let me just let that drain off. We'll have a quick look at the plug that was in the sump. Let's see what we've got on that. One of the most simple checks you can do is see what's on the end of your magnetic pickup. It doesn't look to be a massive amount there. Let me just put the camera down and we'll give that a wipe off. There's a little bit of filings at the end. Yeah, very small amount of swarf. I don't know if you can just make that out there. They've got some residual pick up there. But it's not an unusual amount. It's not a massive Christmas tree of fur, which is a positive. So let me give that a good clean up and then uh, let's just check if the engine's finished draining. Next job, just need to take the oil filter off, empty that out as well. And that don't appear to want to come off by hand. <laughs> okay, that's on tight. <laughs> hmm. Normally the oil filter tool will spin it off. Um, that's wellied well and truly on. Somebody didn't want this to come off in a hurry. Again, the actual oil that's come out of the filter is pretty clean. So I think the uh, emulsification is just due to it being stood for so long rather than uh, a water leak inside the actual engine itself, which is good news. Oil filter's empty. I'm just gonna put it back on now while we remove the engine just to protect this area.
Okay, two oil cooler lines, and then that's the oil circuit completely drained. So hopefully it will reduce mess as I sort of shift the engine around. So let me set up to get this taken off as well. Okay, so these are 19 mil. Oh, loose, good. Binding a little bit. Okay. Now, the top one is actually taking it out of the engine, so I'm just going to need to uh, get a second 19 mil spanner. <clears throat> Okay, that's that off. And again, I think the, the oil looks to be not too bad. Just again, it's, I mean, where it's dropping in, it's, it, you can't probably pick that up on the uh, camera, but it's actually pretty clean going in there. So let, I'll let that just drain off and then I'll come back to you in a second. Okay, oil was left to sit for a little while just to see if it's separated out a bit. Um, Always a good thing to do is check through what's left after you sort of drain the oil away into whatever container you can use to dispose of. So I've got some little bits of black debris. That's hard. There's um, a little bit of emulsification. Smells very petrolly as well, so that would probably support the position on the fact that it's got low compression on the horizontal cylinder so it's probably allowing fuel to flush by but there's not much there's the odd little bit of solid debris but as we saw from the magnetic pickup not not much so I think um, might get relatively lucky here. I mean, it does feel a little bit gravelly as you go through the remnants of the oil, but I'm not getting any major chunks, just little bits of debris, so. No massive metallic pieces lying around anywhere, which would be your big warning. Now that's a bit of um, plastic or something. So it'll be interesting to see what we get when we get inside there. There's a little chunk of something metallic. But yeah, always have a good check of your oil when you've drained it out and done an oil change. It's always good to see what's in there. I've left the strainer in for now because obviously we're going to be breaking the engine apart anyway. But if you were doing a standard oil change, you would take your strainer out to have a look. Let me just wipe this round and clean it to clean it and just put it away and then we'll uh, get on with the next stage which is removing the chain and then the engine's ready to drop. Okay, need to get the sprocket cover off. It's two H5 bolts. One, two. And we're away. Lovely corroded chain. <laughs> so, um, best way for me to do this, I'm going to unbolt the eccentric adjuster on the rear, slacken the chain off, and then hopefully I can just run it off. Um, 
Alternatively, what I might do is just buzz that nut off quickly as well, just so that when it gets loose, I can pop the sprocket and then just rest the chain back against the swing arm. So let me do that. Okay, nut buzzed off. We we'll need to do loosen these two bolts here. Might spray a bit of WD-40 and leave it for a few minutes first, and then I will get my chain adjuster tool and just take off some of the slack. Uh, sorry, take off some of the tension so that we can slacken this chain off. So let me do that, and I'll come back once they're loose. I'm just going to soak those for a bit first because there's a bit of corrosion there, so I'm just going to be a bit careful. Okay, they're loose. Let's get the chain tool and uh, slacken it off. Right, that's now super duper slack. Let's uh, pop the front sprocket off, get the chain out of the way, and we are ready to uh, start unbolting the engine. Okay, so gonna loosen off the engine securing bolts now. So. We've done one already because it was the crash bungs got their own stud and nut arrangements. So that's loose. I haven't checked if it knocks through yet. On here, we've got to use a 15 mil long reach on this side, and then an 8 mil key on the other side. Right. So let me just loosen that off. That one was loose and just popped down straight away, which is nice. I'm just going to leave it in there for now so when I do the swing arm, I've got something to support it. 20 mil. Okay, so nut is out. Doesn't look to be that heavily corroded. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the bolt back in. Did I say nut? I meant bolt. Um, and that'll give me something to hit against just to get this started and see how lucky we're going to be, whether we're corroded in or not. So let me get a Mark 1 persuasion stick and uh, see what happens. Now they can bind up on the bearings and that's our risk so they tend they don't tend to bind up on the engine it's the steel to steel contact the steel of the spindle and the steel of the inner mounting face of the bearing so fingers crossed this one moves right let me just see how we get on <laughs> Okay, good news. This one is just tapping through nice and gently. I'm not having to put any force on it at all. Um, I don't know if you can make that out, but we've moved about 30 mil without any issue. So what I'm gonna do, because I can't film it in a decent angle, I just wanted to see, let you see it coming out, but Bolts, bolts in nice condition. You can see I've not had to welly it hard. 
So I'm gonna just get this swing arm axle out off camera and then I'll get back to filming when I take the two support struts off. You can see the engine's now rested on the engine stand. I'm, I lost my spacer piece for the 848 stroke 1098 engines. I don't know where that's gone, so I've had to use a bit of wood for now. So I'll, um, I'll apologize in advance for the lack of professionalism on my cradle, but it should have like a, I had a plastic piece that goes here. Um, luckily I had an off cut of wood lying around, but you can see supported on the rear mount there, supported on the start motor. Um, that will take the weight of the engine. It's all jacked up and ready to go. Not not much weight on them at the moment because I want the weight to come onto it when the engine is released. So let me do that off camera now. Sorry, camera died when I was taking those, those ones out. So um, these were pretty straightforward. As you saw, this one, when I loosened it, just popped out and it did again just a second ago. Uh, this one, a li little bit tighter, but not not um, stuck in from corrosion. It just I think it had a slight bit of weight on it. So I've got the engine now fully supported on the cradle. The swing arm axle is actually in pretty good condition. You can just see the early signs of corrosion starting, but it looks like it's been looked after and has been greased properly at some point, um, either installation when it was first built and we've got lucky um with it being sat outside it hasn't corroded but um yeah you can just i mean it's luckily it's got grease that's got a bit of rust pickup in it but it came out pretty easily these sometimes can be an absolute sod to get out of the bikes so that's a really really good plus point so and um i've got a drift that i use on the outside there so it hasn't damaged it at all so engine is now supported just need to start lowering it which i'll do via these jack stands and hopefully get it out i've got the frame supported on the rear sets so that the frame doesn't drop as drop the engine so hopefully as soon as i've got the engine clear of the swing arm pivot i'll quickly stick that back in okay let's do that Okay, engine lowered down. As you see, it was pretty straightforward. Just gradually took it down until we got to the position we are at the moment. So um, what I've got to do now is just lift the bike frame up and shoo the engine away. So I'm going to go get the help of somebody to do that and we'll get it off camera. And next, next time you see it, hopefully be on the floor ready to do our next bit of work. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, engine out on the floor. Uh, as you can see, it's it's really dirty. Um, now, it's always good advice before you pop an engine open, clean it, because you don't want to introduce any more dirt than might already be inside the engine. So I am going to take this outside and give it a bit of a bougie down. So goes without saying what I'll do is I'll block off all of the openings that I don't want water to get into so where the clutch push rod goes in the oil breather I've already sort of closed off the intakes but I'll put a bit of tape over those as well and I'll stuff something up the exhaust and also put something into the ends of both the oil feeds and then that way I can just give it a damn good clean um, because anywhere else water could get in is water channels by the way so I'm not going to cover up any of the um, water pipes as you can imagine but anywhere where it's an oil outlet or an engine inlet I shall just block off this is good practice and then give this a clean and then that will give us a basis by which to work from so 
I will not film that because it's bloody horrible outside today and I'm going to quickly go through it as quick as I can so I can get it back in here, dried off and ready to take apart. So be back in a minute. Okay, so engine has been cleaned. As you can see, it's not come up too badly actually. There's a lot of like corroded um, fittings in that. But actually... For a bike that's been sat outside for so long, it actually cleaned up reasonably well. So like the sort of weak areas of the paint are still in reasonable condition. You can see that somebody's had the clutch cover off for a change in its history because that is not Ducati sealant. Um, hopefully we've got find no major problems inside there. So the last task I've got to do to get to the position I needed to get to for this customer is get the heads off and have a look and see what we can find inside. The horizontal apparently has got low compression so this will be the interesting one and will be the one that will come off first and then I'll take off the vertical. So first things I need to do is I need to get the engine into its timed position i.e. horizontal top dead center i'll get the covers off and then we will pop the belts off so we'll release the tension pop the belts off then unbolt the horizontal head and we'll have a look at that uh, i'll then pull the barrel out and have a look at that and then we'll do the same on the vertical head so let me just spin this round slightly so I can get the turning tool in and we will get this bike into horizontal top dead centre. Okay, um, let's get these covers off so that we can see our belts. Okay, um, as you can see, it's a little bit rusty inside here. So, what I need to do is I need to move around my horizontal top dead center mark. there. Let's just check we're definitely at top to the centre. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is remove the tension from the belt. So I'll undo this nut and that nut. Same as I would on any bike. We'll take the tension off, pop these belts off and uh, that'll leave us ready to take this horizontal head off. Let me grab a 12 mil socket. take off the mobile pulley so I can get it round. There we go. So bit scabby, bit dirty. Um, see all the build up that's in there. Obviously we didn't clean this 
Now there's corrosion on the fixed wheels. Only surface corrosion, so that should clean up. Cam wheels look okay. Okay. So, now that we're in this position, what we're going to do is we're going to pop this horizontal head off. So, I need to be able to undo one, two, and spin this round. Three and four nuts. So, I'm just going to switch you off for a second while I just grab the spanner and we will do that. Here we go. Um, splitting at the piston end first. <clears throat> Bit of a pain. rather have the head separated but we uh, appear to be stuck on one of the dowels Okay, um, head doesn't initially look too bad. multi-layer gasket doesn't appear to have failed anywhere let's pop the uh, barrel up now I'll just quickly undo that there we go take it fully off. Okay. Right, there's no massive amount of scoring inside the cylinders which would 
lead me to thinking that um, either we've gone out of size just through wear and tear because there is like a polished area here um, I've left it on the piston rings at the moment but let's just pull it right off So, I'm not sure if you can make this out here, but you can quite clearly see the wear where the pistons been going up or down. So you've actually got the skirt pattern actually in the cylinder barrel. Now that might have been a result of it sitting there so long. You can see where the piston rings have been sat against the bore for a while. So there's some corrosion there. It's hard to make out. Let's see if I can uh, improve the lighting a little bit. So you can just about make out. The sort of wear in the cylinders. So, but no up and down scoring, which is usually a surefire sign of corrosion but it looks like looking at how polished we are in a couple of areas that we might be out of spec so I'll have to measure that up Let me just move on to the other camera. Okay, so one possible cause is, as some of you might notice this, and others of you that have not taken an engine apart are gonna completely have this skip past you. But all of the piston rings are jammed in the piston. They're not, like I can't, even with a, a significant amount of force, I'm not turning them. Um, so they've yeah they're just not moving at all which means they would have worn and then they'll just get blown past although there's not much signs of blow pie on the actual piston itself that i can see but the very fact that those piston rings are jammed in is possibly one of the causes of the low compression. There's a lot of rubbish in the oil ring as well. So that's not fantastic. It's not had great combustion as well. It's very dirty. And you can see the, the wear on that side of the piston. Valves. Don't look too bad, but when I fully strip the head, if we go further, I'll, uh, but I can't see any, I mean, there's no chunks out of the valves, which is a good sign. So I think this is my main cause, is the actual piston rings are stuck. I mean, it's lucky that the barrel's not scored as a result of that. Um, yeah, there's, you can see, hopefully you can see the wear a bit better in there now. So I'm going to measure that up off camera. I've, I'll put a link to um, another video up in the top right hand side somewhere um, where I've done that before, but I'm not going to film the process again. Right, um, let me get off the vertical as well because I'm slightly worried about if it's that bad here what's it going to look like in there so let me just pop this one off um, I'll go back onto the other camera to do that
Okay, this one doesn't look too bad. No major vertical scoring. Same sort of wear marks inside, so I don't know if that's been where it's just been sat for a long time, but we've got the same sort of polished landings for the skirt against the rest of the piss uh, against the rest of the there's a little bit of vertical scoring on this one, so I have to have a look at that. Again, a lot of polishing in the mid mid position of the cylinder. I'm not sure if that's zoom in correctly, but you can still see the cross hatching, so be interesting to see how that measures out. And on this one, piston rings have popped straight out, which would sort of support the fact that this had much higher compression. Um, and the, the lower oil ring is in much cleaner condition. They've all popped out and I can spin these without any problem, whereas obviously these are locked in. So I think that might might be the cause of the low compression in the horizontal cylinder. It looks like a very simple problem, um, which you might be able to resolve pretty easily. I've still got to dimension up the cylinders just to see where they're at. Um, but as I said, I'm not going to film that. I will give an update on the next video. Okay, so um, just as an update as to where we are at the moment, and I'm going to be calling this video quits here um, so what I need to do is just need to measure the piston sizes and the barrels to see where they are in terms of wear. I think that predominantly the cause is the fact that we've got the piston rings locked in on that horizontal piston so that might be as a result of uh, infrequent oil changes I know the oil that we took out earlier um, looked relatively new but emulsified um, so it was like a chocolatey color as you saw but it wasn't it wasn't white so it wasn't laden with water um, and it wasn't black which shows that it would have sat in the engine for ages so I think um, either a previous owner has not kept the maintenance up on this prior to the the chap that had the bike um, because the oil control ring on the bottom of the piston is jammed full of rubbish um, and I think that the scraper rings and the uh, the top piston ring evidently have got the same sort of build up within the piston land uh, the ring lands on the piston sorry so I'm gonna check the cylinders check the piston sizes I will check the uh, valve seats um, just with a, a little bit of petrol in the bowl see if that leaks away because that will give an indication that they need to be relapped in but there's no chunks of valve missing um, they're now dependent on whether the new owner wants me to proceed with the work once we've had a conversation I will be fully stripping the heads down and relapping those valves just to be sure but there's no bits missing which is a good sign um, I do believe we found the culprit um, I'll also have a discussion as to whether we split the block down fully. Um, obviously with the fact it's had crappy oil in it for a while, it might be worth just splitting the cases to have a look uh, at all the bearings and ensure that there's no um, corrosion or damage to any of the bearings and we can just put it back together if we need to. So I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, chuck us a like. Uh, any questions or comments, please stick them down below and I'll try and answer as soon as I can. And if you're not a subscriber to the channel, which I know 50% of you that watch these videos are not, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell for more content to come. Thanks for watching. See you later. Cheers. In.